Man, that was close. Welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watt2K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. So, the New York Knicks have just wrapped up a Game 2 victory at Madison Square Garden, defeating the Miami Heat by a final score of 111 to 105. And considering the Knicks got Julius Randle back for this game and the Heat played without Jimmy Butler, that was way too close for comfort. I, I, I gotta say, for as many undrafted no name players as Miami has on their team, they are coached incredibly well. They play incredibly hard. They play a throwback style of basketball. I have to give them credit for that. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem like they should be battling the way that they do, competing with, you know, more of the upper echelon teams, but they do it. And that really goes back to Eric Spolster, who's just a darn good coach. But it was a, but the Knicks had enough to survive this game, winning a game that they absolutely had to win. Uh, you know, if they had dropped this game, I, I don't think they would have had a chance to have realistically come back. You know, I mean, if you can't beat the Heat without Jimmy Butler at home, then what are we talking about here? But the Knicks take an early lead, 31-24 after the first quarter, shooting very well, 5 for 10 from three-point range to start off. 11 from 21 from the field, but then they go absolutely cold in the second quarter, missing seven straight threes at one point. Miami takes the 54 to 51 halftime lead. You know, one thing that we're really seeing in this series is that Miami's bench is just completely outplaying the Knicks. Uh, through halftime, Miami had outscored the Knicks bench by a combined tally of 17 to 2. And for the game, uh, the bench scoring turned out to be 22 to 12 overall in favor of the Heat. So then, even after the third quarter, it was very, it was really back and forth. I mean, Miami always seemed to have the lead from the second quarter on, and the Knicks would make their runs. They'd make a big shot here and there. The outside shooting was definitely better. The free throw shooting was definitely better than what we saw in Game One. But it seemed every single time. Whether it was uh, Duncan Robinson, whether it was High Smith, you know Kyle Lowry had a little bit uh, more of a down game this time, only six points and six assists in this game. He didn't even make a three, but uh, the Heat just, uh, you know, they just wouldn't let the Knicks get back in this game. But then with seven minutes left. Caleb Martin, who started in place of Jimmy Butler, makes a big three, 93-87, and. It really felt like time was starting to run out. Even though they were down six points with seven minutes to le left to go, you really felt the Knicks had to start making a run because they couldn't. They were scoring, but they weren't gaining on Miami. They're just kind of hanging around, but it really felt like it was Miami's game. And then the Knicks go on a 12 to 3 run. Jalen Brunson, his outside shooting really started to heat up. He made a couple of threes, which are absolutely enormous for this team. So the second three knots the game at 93-93. Gabe Vincent goes on to make three straight free throws on a uh, on a Josh Hart foul. Not a very good play by Josh Hart. But then Hart comes back to makes a three makes a three point jumper of his own, tying the game at 96. Next Knicks possession, Jalen Brunson nails a 25 foot three point shot. The Knicks have a 99-96 lead with four minutes left to go in the game. But here's the sequence that I really started to feel confident the Knicks were going to win this game. You know, pretty much from the first quarter on, I had no confidence. It just felt like the Heat were playing such good fundamental basketball. You could see Jalen Brunson was hobbled. You know, both of the Knicks' big men were in foul trouble. Both had three fouls, both Isaiah Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson. Now, I'll get to Isaiah Hartenstein in a moment. But yeah, it just felt like they were in a, a lot of trouble. Like Miami w just kept answering that they really owned this game. So with two minutes left, Bam Adebayo makes a layup. It's now 101-100, Knicks on top. The Knicks take it down the floor, and Josh Hart drills a three from the corner to extend the lead to four points. he take it down. Kyle Lowry misses a driving layup. On the other side, Josh Hart goes for another three, misses, grabs the offensive rebound, goes for the layup, misses that one. Julius Randle gets the rebound, and Adebayo fouls him. Randle makes both free throws, and it's a 106-100 game. 
And that was when I started to feel pretty good, especially with one minute left after that when Gabe Vincent misses a three-pointer, Hart rebounds again, and uh, Mitchell Robinson has the ball and uh, gets fouled and actually makes his first free throw. Now, I know the Heat made their little comeback in the end. I mean, Julius Randle, what was he thinking? Stepping on the line for an inbounds pass, which led to a Miami three. But, you know, I I, I got to be honest, I wasn't overly worried about it. You know, on the next possession, 22 seconds left with uh, the Knicks only up a couple of points. Uh, at that point, they're up uh, 108 to 105. And the Knicks inbound the ball and kill 10 seconds off the clock. And uh, Josh Hart makes both free throws, and that was pretty much uh, the end of the game. So it was very close, very way too close for comfort. <laughs> I got to say, the Knicks are going to have to take another step up because I feel like the Heat are getting the most out of their ability while the Knicks are not. J just my feeling. Let's go through a couple of stats real quick. On the Miami side, Kayla Martin uh, led the Heat with 22 points, 8 for 15 shooting. Four for eight from three-point range. Man, Gabe Vincent is one infuriating player to play against. 21 points that he had. Uh, made the most uh, threes of any Miami player. Uh, Adebayo, 15 points, eight rebounds. On the Knicks side, a couple players that we got to talk about. On the negative side, I'm actually going to start on the negative. I don't need to see Emmanuel Quigley again. I, I swear, I would rather see Deuce McBride, Derek Rose. Uh, Quigley, is, when he's on, he's a very good player, but he has been terrible in the playoffs. The only exception to me was Game 5 in Cleveland. But nine minutes, three or seven from the field, couldn't make a single three-pointer. I mean... You know, two fouls in nine minutes. I mean, it was his time on the court was a waste. I'm sorry. He just did not play well, and he has to really, really step his game up. Especially, I'll tell you what, if Jalen Brunson remains hobbled with this ankle injury, then you need another point guard to step up, and best case scenario, that's quickly. But Julius Randle looked great coming back. 8 for 18 from the floor, 25 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists, Fantastic job. I called him out. I wanted him to show up. Not that he saw my video, but nonetheless, he did. He was needed, and he stepped his game up, so I give Randall credit. Jalen Brunson, much better shooting game. Uh, 10 for 19 from the floor. Made six three-pointers in this game after not making one in game one. 30 points. R.J. Barrett, 8 for 17 from the field, 24 points. Isaiah Hartenstein, my God. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you look, Isaiah Hardenstein will never be on anybody's fantasy basketball team unless it like counts a lot for rebounds and blocks. But he just has the weirdest box scores of all time. 26 minutes, I mean, Mitchell only played 21. So Hardenstein actually had more time on the floor than Mitch did, which uh, did make sense since uh, Robinson uh, had four fouls uh, pretty early on in the second half. But Isaiah finishes with three points, nine rebounds, and five fouls. And, and what I love about him, even though he, he looks big and slow and lumbering, he makes these hustle rebound plays. He's like, it's crazy. I mean, he really gets the most out of what he has to give. And between Hart and Hartenstein, to me, they are the Hart Foundation. I mean, I, I love it. I'm here for it. And, uh, man, I wanted to give him a whole lot of credit. And the rebounds, this was the Knicks team that we saw against Cleveland in that first series where they dominated Cleveland on the boards. That to me was the biggest reason they won that series in five games. They out-rebounded Miami tonight 50-34, to 34, uh, led by Julius Randle with 12 rebounds, Josh Hart with 11, Hardenstein with 9. Mitch only had five boards in this game. Uh, pretty crazy. And the other stat, uh, this was a very evenly played game if you look at field goal percentage, assists, turnovers, all of that. But points off turnovers. The Knicks had 22 points to Miami's 9. They're converting those opportunities, and that is a very encouraging sign. So now the teams are going to take a couple of days off before Game 3 uh, down in Miami, and then Game 4 in Miami as well. It, it's hard to imagine this not being a long series. These are, even though these two teams play a very different style of basketball, they're a very good match. It's like the boxer and the and the pure puncher. It, it's that sort of a situation to be. Uh, the I guess the other thing that I would say, first of all, a few things on some of the things at the Garden. Cool seeing all the celebrities, Aaron Rodgers with Sauce Gardner. Fantastic. I loved it. And I love watching Carmelo Anthony celebrate. I mean, I've got my Carmelo shirt on. Seeing him celebrate Jalen Brunson's three-pointer, it, it, it was just fantastic. And uh, good for the Knicks fans. This is the first time the Knicks have won a second-round game at home in 10 years. 
Uh, it's also the first time they've been in the second round in 10 years. It's It's been a minute. But, uh, yeah, this was a, a very much a feel-good win, even though it was incredibly stressful. Uh, but I'm very happy with what I'm seeing from Hartenstein, from Josh Hart. I, I got to say this. I got I, One thing I would do, I would consider starting Quentin Grimes again. The Knicks have been at their best when Josh Hart comes in and gives them the spark. I think I would use Grimes to start off, bring Hart in, and let's see what happens from there. Uh, Obi Toppin, I want to mention him. He only got 10 minutes in this game. He had two three-point attempts, one of which, uh, oh my gosh, it was like it, it looked it looked like it looked like me shooting a, shooting a three-pointer blindfolded. I mean, oh my gosh, it was it was ugly. But he only had 10 minutes in this game uh, with Randall, uh, you know, back in the fold. I, mean, I was actually thinking one idea I had. I thought that Tom Thibodeau might want to consider using Randall and Toppin on the floor together with. Hartenstein and Robinson both in foul trouble but Hartenstein took over settled in it wasn't necessary to do that but to me that for a moment that was an idea worth considering I'm glad he didn't have to do it because Hartenstein was just fantastic so Randall and Hartenstein I give those two players uh, all the props in the world and uh, and Jalen Brunson as well for playing uh, he played very well on an injured ankle so I feel pretty good about this series. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm overly confident right now. We'll see what the health of Jimmy Butler uh, holds. I would be very surprised if he didn't play game three. But you know what? Miami is a machine, with or without him. You know, even if Butler uh, doesn't play, they have many other players who can pick. They don't have their go-to player, but they have a lot of players who can pick up the slack if needed. And when you have a coach who's that good, sometimes that's really all you need. Well, the series is 1-1. I'm ready for game three. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.